breakfast puppies? This podcast contains adult language and content and is meant for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to the Glitter Boys. Yes. <laughs> Welcome back, listeners. Today, we're talking about Palladium Fantasy. Oh, yes. If you watched the unboxing video of Matthew's Christmas Surprise Package or listened to the episode, you know that Matthew recently got a, a big old dump of Palladium Fantasy books. Thanks to yours truly. What have you thought so far of reading them? Well, I've read three of them. There are two that I am not allowed to read due to <laughs> a uh, due to a, a, a meta game within a game that we will be starting soon. From I finished the entire Palladium Fantasy role playing game, and this game is brutal. This isn't this isn't D anD D. This th- there is no forgiveness here. Yeah, Palladium Fantasy, and just so anyone who's listening knows, we're talking first edition here. Yeah, you know, this is way back in the nineteen eighties. The first edition is the role playing game that I actually started gaming with. I we talked about that back on our Origins episode, but Palladium Fantasy. First edition has this deep, comfy hobbit hole in my heart that I will (laughs) always, I will always come back to this game. I've still got several of the books that I originally had as a teenager, as a kid and a teenager sitting on my shelf. Matthew, earlier when we uh, were setting up this recording, you had mentioned there's nothing like a beautiful, crisp book. None of my Palladium fantasy books have been beautiful (laughs) and crisp for a long time. Yeah, I, I most of my Palladium books are dog-eared, well loved. I mean, they are they're, they're old. I've I've had them for twenty plus years. So, I mean, they've read, been reread, left open with the you know face down somewhere for a week. I mean, they're just you know they're, they're well loved books. It was it was actually a real treat to flip through from the uh, the the Christmas box a brand new, fresh smelling Palladium book with you know no dog ears and. No coffee stains and <sighs> it's a lovely thing. It was it was nice. I like that. On the flip side, I've always felt that a role playing game book isn't really truly seasoned until it has its first coffee and or mustard stains in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you know, just some Cheeto fingers or something on there. <laughs> Usually, it's a coffee stain in my in my case. Yeah, I mean, if there's not a Funyun bookmark, what are you really doing with your game? <laughs> <laughs> One thing I really like about this uh, this first edition set is that it, it starts out with a poem for what I can only assume is Kevin's gaming group. The Defilers. Yeah. They are legendary in the Palladium universe. They are where everything started. We'll actually talk a little bit more about them when we get to our introduction to Rifts. Rifts is deeply rooted in the Defilers. But yeah, what did you think of that poem? It was it was good. I, I like I like a book that starts out with lore. I, I really do. And I like it not to be heavily explained, just enough to to pique your curiosity or pique your interest. And that was enough to give me, okay, what's this? At this point, I've I've read through the book for the the game we were talking about, and yeah, uh, I believe you, you put it best when you said, "No, palladium is metal as fuck." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and today we're actually specifically talking about the palladium fantasy as an introduction to the game. What yeah. sets it apart from other RPGs and what you, dear listener, if you've never given it a go, what you might be getting yourself into should you agree to play in a game, as Matthew has recently done in our case. And yeah, something that I like to say is metal as fuck. Like it has a lot of similarities with first edition D&D. You can clearly see that there are a lot of parallels that they took with the development of some of the systems, but it very quickly diverges into its own thing. There's this, you know, very basic rule system. It's the same Palladium rule system that if you've played Palladium games, you're used to. This is where it basically started. So in the first edition, at least, it's a lot more simplified. Characters don't have gobs and gobs of attacks. Like you start the game with one and characters don't have gobs and gobs of physical skills to give them gobs and gobs of bonuses to uh, those to their second set of hit points, which don't exist in this game. SDC, only the property of armor and shields. Yeah. 
what it's laid out, you you flip open the book and you're immediately given stat sheets. You, it goes attributes, races, hit points, and then, I don't know, what is it? Nine, nine ten pages in? Insanity. Well, oh, <laughs> the what's, insanity tables. Before we even get to insanity, let's take a look at the attribute tables. So, you know, uh, right there on the third page of the book, after it tells you how to roll your character stats, it tells you the bonuses that you get for super high stats. And then it shows you what's, what dice you need to roll for each of the characters, the races. So of, of all the things that they could have chosen to put on this table... Of course, you got the name of the race, human, oh, elf, God, dwarf, right. etc. You got the lifespan, you got their stats, and there's one other thing on that table. Only one other thing on this most nom, important nom, of nom, tables. Nom, 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 nom. Their percentage of cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> I, when we were in the, the Discord trying to get this game set up, I'm like, what is this doing in that stat block? And NPC goes, Palladium's metal is fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I remember Brandon was rolling up his his character. He's like, well, I'm not a psionic, but I am a cannibal. <laughs> like, I'll have to watch myself around. Yeah, it's just but, some uh, of the decisions that they made in this, the things that they put forefront, it, it right there for you, the reader, to see at the very beginning is just fascinating. The, you know, like I was saying earlier, the tone is very different from most games that you're probably used to playing on the tabletop. And extremely so for the 80s. I mean, this is now, now shock culture is a thing. There would be nothing like this to play in the 80s. D&D was just entering its, uh, what, Dragonlance phase? D&D, yeah. Well, this was first published in 1983. So yeah. I know that D&D would have been around for about five or six years. It would have been in a first edition stage at this point. Yeah, yeah, so seriously, nothing like this out there. Not yeah. even Hackmaster. The only other thing that I could think that might be close to it uh, would be, well, okay, uh, my knowledge of the old games is limited, but I'm thinking something like Tunnels and Trolls, uh, maybe? Not as brutal. Not not by a long shot. Oh, now, yeah, yeah, not as brutal. This is me flipping through it 15 years ago in a shop and not taking it home, uh, but, you know. From from my recollection, it was just it was an early version of D and D with the serial numbers filed off and moved across state lines. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, and especially here in the first edition, it is very similar to a lot of aspects that became popularized by Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. You know, you've got the D twenty combat system, you've got the you've got the percentile based skill system, which I think was made common by uh, what the Chaosium system, like basic role playing and whatnot at the time. Yeah. I think they're the ones who kickstarted that, or maybe it was Rollmaster anyway. And then you've got this very simple but brutal system of life where characters aren't really expected to live that long. And it's fascinating because of the, the sheer diversity in characters that you get right here in the core book. You've got the, the fighter classes. You've got the basic, you know, you've got the wizard, you've got the priest, you've got the druid. But then you've also got these weird magicians, like two yeah. different types of magicians who only do symbols. Some of them that do summoning circles and protection circles and the other ones that do wards. And they're so unique that there's no comparison to them in, in Dungeons and Dragons. Like they don't have any immediately applicable power. Even D&D games that I've seen that have had characters like rune mages still had some ability to like cast immediate spells. These are long term building power quietly in the background characters yeah. going on adventures in order to gain knowledge kind of stuff. And there's, there's, if that's your, if that's your gig or something like that, there is classes for you to play that as well. I mean, there's, there's nobles, there's scholars who are useless, just useless in combat and have no special skills to fry someone with a mind or anything like that. Just pure social or economic clout. So, I mean, it's, you, you can literally, and I mean, there, there's commoners as well. There's a squire. Uh, there, there's, there's all these different classes. You can, you, you can literally, well, once again, we've said this a lot about Palladium, but you can literally play anything. <laughs> oh yeah. There's the, the peasant, the, the squire, yeah. the scholar, the noble, the merchant in other books. If you look around through some of the other books, you can find these quick 
character classes that just appear in the middle of a listing or something like in the old ones book halfway through one of the chapters or one of the the town descriptions there's lumberjack there's a lumberjack OCC right there in the book <laughs> wait, wait why isn't this indexed well, well you know palladium whatever but yeah oh, that said speaking of index palladium fucking fantasy rpg is indexed it's actually i think if not one it's not the if not one of it is the possibly only palladium book with an index <laughs> And it's a God, very good it. index, I must note. One thing I like about this game, too, is that it's a, uh, once again, it's a complete set. The GM has everything they need to run, and the player has everything they, they need to run. At the very back of the book, it just says, players, stop reading here. There's uh, maps, some basic adventures. It's, it has its own little uh, monster section. Sections on the gods, on the devils, the humanoid races, yeah. dragons, elementals, angels, fairies, creatures of magic, giants, and even animals. Like, yeah. It's got a full I'm, bestiary. Yeah, it's it's a standalone. It's it's not a monster manual, a DMG, and a player's guide, which is one of the things I really appreciate about the, the whole system. Pages of coins. <laughs> <laughs> this game doesn't have gold pieces, silver pieces, and copper pieces. It has eastern currency, the western currency, the northern currency, the old kingdom currency. With pictures. Yeah, with pictures, actual size pictures of how they translate to each other. I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I love the it, kind it, of stuff. It's just the the amount of detail that can be crammed into one book if you're not squeezing down the text for yet another picture of a halfling in an adventurous pose. Yeah. At you wizards of the coast. You you can cram in actual knowledge that actual people can actually use in their actual game. God, I mean, this is the tenth printing of this. And what did you say? This was 1983? I think 1982 or 1983 was the first yeah. printing. Yep, 1983. Yeah, I mean, just... It's such a rich game for one book. And it's not just one book. There are... I'm, I'm hesitant to say hundreds, but there's probably a hundred? Maybe? Fifty? Of the Palladium system itself, the fantasy, I think there's maybe twenty five to thirty books. Oh, really? But specifically of the of the of the Megaverse itself, which this is fully compatible with. God, there's so many books out there: Rifts books, Nightbane books, Heroes of Limited books, yeah. all that stuff. They're all versatile. Yeah, I I love this. And to give a little bit of a backstory of why we're talking about this system specifically, currently. If you've been paying attention, uh, I'm running two Rifts games for Matthew is one of the players. Uh, Brandon, who joined us in a few episodes previous, was another one of the players. And I have these two alternating Sunday Rifts games. Well, I've also been itching to run a fantasy game. And I figured that the way that we would do it is any Sunday or any month that had a fifth Sunday, that fifth Sunday would be a Palladium game, a fantasy game. And we would play it as if one of the players... One of the characters in the game, in the Rifts game, who happens to also be a, a game nerd, was running the game for the other characters also in the Rifts game. Which is, once again, Brandon Martin. <laughs> Since day one, he said he was a game geek. His character was a game geek and yeah. that he was working on a role-playing game. And I think what he did was browbeat the characters in both of Nathaniel's sessions into sitting down to a game. So it's it's crossover. Yeah, I'm really excited to see how this is going to play out. I'm not one of those GMs who plans things out like super, super far in advance and sets up railroads or whatnot, but I have big ideas for this. <laughs> big ideas. I think we're setting it up so that everyone, most of the party is a dwarf. So we're going to yeah. kind of be doing something of a hobbit-like party of dwarves going off to reclaim a great fortune thing. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Another thing in this, uh, the races aren't your your stereotypical Tolkien-esque races, which is pretty much what every other system borrowed from. Oh, yeah. You start off the game being able to play monster races, and they're so yeah. unique. The dwarves are pissy. I mean, they're not just angry pissy. They, they lost a battle with the elves and have never let the elves forget it. The elves are apologetic towards the dwarves. Everyone seems to like the humans, which... I mean, this is 2021, uh, and I, I find that doubtful, but, <laughs> you know, it is, it is what it is. The 80s were a more optimistic time. Yeah, everyone likes the humans, but the, the elves and the dwarves hate each other. And we're not talking like the friendly Tolkien-esque rivalry, but more like, he finally went asleep. Let's let his throat kind of hate. 
even the monsters, like the dwarves and elves have their own thing, but the monsters themselves are not the monsters that you're thinking they are, if you're familiar with D&D. Kobolds are much different here. The kobolds are a much a much hardier, less stupid, actual thriving race in the world. They're not level one fodder. Yeah, they're not level one fodder. They have much more of a mythological feel. Like, like if someone who wasn't familiar with Dungeons and Dragons in this day and age, which is rare, but if you took someone from Europe where the concept of the kobold in mythology came from, they would find a lot more in common with these kobolds than whatever those scrap dog-like reptile fodder have become in yeah. Dungeons and Dragons. They are they are a fearsome race. They are in some ways allies and in other ways enemies to the dwarves. Very complicated. Ogres aren't those big stupid, you know, fifth level brutes that, you know, you have to gain a few levels before you can take in a dungeon. They're basically Neanderthals in this game. Yeah. The trolls, trolls are what you would think of as trolls from folklore and not those scrawny allergic to fire regenerating D and D trolls kind of thing. Right. I love the variety of races. I, I love, I love all of it. And uh, God, it's like I said, have a hole in my heart. I'm never going to stop <laughs> playing this game. And second edition did some cool things. Maybe sometime we'll talk about the differences between first and second edition and why I like first edition more. But for now, it's a fantastic game. I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. We'll have to hear from other people out there who also love Palladium Fantasy First Edition. Yeah, on the, uh, the, I think it's what, three times a year that we'll get to play this? After one of those, we'll give you uh, another update on, <laughs> on how actually playing it went, because I'll be the noob on that one. Yeah, this year, I think we're looking at January, May, and October. Yeah, and that's it. That's it. So they better be long and thrilling, satisfying game sessions. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, folks, and uh, we'll catch you on the next time when we discuss Robotech. Ooh, I'm excited. You've been listening to The Glitter Boys, a Palladium Books fan podcast. Glitter Boys, Rifts, the Megaverse, and all other such topics are the property of Kevin Sambita and Palladium Books. Please buy all their stuff and help keep them in print and making more games. You can order directly at palladiumbooks.com and their entire catalog is available digitally at drive Through RPG as well. Our opening music is 8-Bit Bass and Lead by Furby Guy from freesound.org. This closing music is Caravana by Philip Gross, available at freemusicarchive.org. All sound effects used are self-made or acquired via Creative Commons Zero License. If you like what you have heard, find us on Twitter and Facebook as The Glitter Boys. That's B-O-I-S. And check us out online at breakfastpuppies.com slash glitterboys. And also join us on the Breakfast Puppies Network Discord at breakfastpuppies.com slash discord. And if you want to help us out, please spread the word and help us build a community. Thanks again for listening. We'll catch you next time.